Hello, uh, this is Sunil Sundraj with the Everyday Fan Sports. I'm happy to welcome in today NJIT baseball pitcher and graduate student Jared Caxo. Jared, thank you so much for taking some time out to speak with me today. Thank you so much for inviting me, and I'm really excited for this conversation. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, so I really much. appreciate it, Jared. A uh, couple days removed from just an incredible run there, uh, the NCAA tournament regionals. Uh, in Fayetteville, Arkansas, uh, you know, we talked about before we came on the air. I mean, NGIT baseball is now known uh, nationally and probably worldwide here after, uh, you know, I said, uh, you know, winning, you know, I said uh, uh, NCAA tournament game against Northeastern last Saturday. And, uh, you know, just the reception that you guys received as a team, uh, you know, from the Arkansas fans and, and also the NCAA, you know, uh, baseball nation. Can you just... I mean, can you just sum up, I mean, what what this run has been like, you know, for you guys, and especially you personally? Yeah, you, you know, it's really it's really difficult to put it into words. Um, it's been such a crazy, crazy run. I feel like it all happened so quickly. You know, we had a really rough start to the season. We were 3-12, and 12, and then yeah. before you know it, we just turned around. We started winning a lot of baseball games, and we won the conference tournament, and we, we made it to probably, I would say, one of the most welcoming welcoming environments we could have ever been. You know, Fayetteville, Arkansas is the capital of college baseball, and the fans there treated us amazing. And as a graduate senior, not knowing, coming off of a COVID season where that, I thought I'm going to never play baseball again, to this environment has been unreal. It's been unbelievable. And I was really trying to soak it all in these past couple of days. Yeah. yeah. And, and really, like, uh, really just taking baseball, and I think – this could not have been a better way to finish my baseball career. And I'm really thankful that we were selected for the Fayetteville Regional. And I'm thankful that this team had so much success this season. Yeah, I mean, there, there is so much, you know, to you know, discuss. But I asked head coach Robbie McClellan, you know, when you guys were struggling early on and you were hit by injuries as well, where was that defining moment? Where was that turning moment that you said, okay, you know what? we're going to write this ship and we're going to, you know, said move up the ladder. Is there somewhere along the line during the season that you could pinpoint, look, you know what, I think uh, uh, things, you know, it's going to definitely, we, we can see the light at the end of the tunnel here, Jared. I think at, there's absolutely, there was a tur like a turning point. So we actually had a double header against Binghamton and we didn't score one run the whole day. Mm -hmm. And it, it was rock bottom, you know, morale could not have been any lower. But after the game, the team kind of huddled up together and we said, look, like, we know we have a lot of good baseball players on this team and we know what we're capable of. We just got to take the pressure off ourselves and kind of settle in. And I think from that point on was sort of a, our demeanor changed as a team and, and we, we sort of calmed down and then we just started playing better and we got some guys back from injury and, and the rest is history. You know, we yeah. just kind of went on a run and – we got hot at the right time. We just kept stringing together great quality starts from our pitching. Yeah. Our closer was phenomenal the entire year. And we started getting timely hits, which is what we were missing from the get-go. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it all really started to change at the right time. And it's tough to put a finger exactly what changed, but I think mm -hmm. the demeanor of the team and, and we, we just sort of knew we had to go now or it was going to not end the way we wanted to. So yeah. good, good thing we turned it around. That's true. That's true. And, you know, this this was not easy. A new conference in the American East. You're going from the A-Sun, you know, to the American East. And I, I had to ask you, you know, I mean, uh, much different, you know, uh, conference. And, you know, now travel being cut down, which I, I'm sure you guys are happy about. But, uh, you know, can you just I mean, talk about that, you know, being able to accomplish so much in your first year in the American East, Jared? Yeah, it, re it really means a lot. You know, it was a really trying season with COVID. Yeah. There are a lot of COVID restrictions originally that were in place. Yeah. Um, practices were a little unique in their time slots and the setting and everything. And and with the America East, rather than playing three games like we did in the ASUN, we actually played four games in two yeah. days, yeah. which was – it's really trying, you know. And I think that had to do with some guys getting hurt. There were long days on turf fields. It was hot. Sometimes the weather didn't cooperate so well. So it was a dynamic, fluid season. And – to be able to come through that really shows a lot about the guys on the team and really shows a lot about our, our head coach, Robbie. He kept us, kept us together. Yeah. Um, he kept morale high and he always believed in us from the, from the start. He had the utmost faith in our team. And he always told us, you know, we got a good team. We just gotta, we just gotta start playing 
playing the way we're capable of and staying within ourselves. And I think once we sort of settled in and found that groove, we were able to keep it going and, and build momentum. I think Coach McClellan said that you guys came up with a phrase, I think, during the season, grit ball. I had to ask you about that. <laughs> grit ball, grit ball. Yeah, you know, yeah. We, we love saying how um, players from New Jersey have a lot of grit. Yeah. That's just like sort of our what we've been saying from the, from the jump. Yeah. So we, we started just saying grit ball. You know, one night we were hanging out, you know, we, we play grip ball. You know, we, we like to steal a lot of bases. That's sort yeah. of a something our team is known for. Yeah. We like to steal a lot of bases, play good defense. And we like to – we hit – to be fair, we hit a lot of singles, but we hit a lot of clutch home runs too. Yeah. So we like to say, you know, that's that's all part of grip ball. And it's just really – grip ball really just means play hard, yeah. play the game the right way, and then things will, things will go in your favor. Yeah. And you guys didn't have a home field. No, I mean, no. We talk about how I mean, you know, inspiring that is that you guys don't play on a home field and said yeah. all season long here. I mean, how challenging was that? I mean, I even asked Coach McClellan when we spoke you know, on the phone that you know, getting on that bus, you know, heading over to you know Keene University. I mean, that's not easy to do, you know, practice and you know, and then for games as well. I mean, just talk about that. Yeah, no, it's re it's really it's difficult, you know. A lot of early morning practices, and then you come back. The bus, the bus is kind. Of, it's like you know, twenty five minute bus ride yeah. both ways. It's not really, it's not really a great environment like yeah. the bus. But once you're on the field, it's it's really hard because you know you're off campus. You know, there's schoolwork. It's hard to balance a lot of things. Yeah. There's lifting, and it's just very difficult to balance because going to practice and like such lengthy practices are so time consuming. And I think I think it's it's. You know that's grip ball, though. Yeah, you got to no, keep definitely. going. You got to show up to the field every day, yeah. and you got to get your work in, no matter what. Um, we would love to have our own field, but we're thankful that Kane University—they do have a really nice facility, and yeah. their field, their field is really nice. They just got new turf, and it, you know it, it plays our strengths, and we like it. You know, we're, we would love our own field, obviously, in the future, but um, it's very difficult to for guys to get extra work in as well. You know, because yeah. there's no field. We have to, we're limited to in, in some aspects on campus, mm -hmm. but when we do get to the field, it's important that we all stay on task and, and get our work done. And we, we understand that, you know, having no field is not an excuse to not play well. You know, yeah. we, we still get, we still got to show up to practice. We still got to give it 110% every day. And, and that's what this team does. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of grinders and a lot of uh, strong characters on this team. If nothing was set in, in stone at the end of the season, you guys still had to work your tail off to clinch, a, you know, I said a, a spot in the American East tournament. Can you talk about those final, you know, couple of weeks and that, you know, I mean, that ride, I mean, just being able to do that. I mean, I, I, I you know, of course, from pictures and videos, I mean, how emotional, I mean, just to see, you know, the guys, you know, streaming at the dugout, how, you know, to celebrate that moment when you guys, you know, clinched. I mean, can you talk about those, you know, final couple of weeks, Jared? Yeah, yeah. So it, it was really, it really was insane. You know, we, we had a lot of really close games, a lot of one run, two run games, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, they take a lot out of you. They start building yeah. up. <laughs> but when you win those games, they, they build so much momentum for the team. Because yeah. everyone, whenever the game is close, and this is a really a commitment to our closer, Jake Rappaport, who was able yeah. to shut down the other team late in the game. So whenever we felt we can get a re get a lead early in the early in the game, we wanted to keep it so we can give him the ball. And it's it's so much fun when you're getting clutch hit in the seventh inning late in the game. Yeah. I look at our conference tournament. We had uh we we were losing in the eighth inning against Albany. Yeah, we had two clutch, insanely clutch home runs. Yep. Yeah. And then the next day, Luke Longo hits a walk off, uh, walk off single for us, and that, yeah. the it's just a crazy, crazy, crazy experience, you know, to keep keep having these stressful games. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm a pitcher, <laughs> so I'm watching, you know. I bet you're biting your fingernails and <laughs> yeah, 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 and you know, you're, you're looking for any any sort of way to get get runs home and yeah. to play over and over one run games and two run games and win them and. It's really – it's a testament to our team's uh, character and our effort and how well-prepared we are for each game. Yeah. And I think I think we never give up on any game, no matter what. We had some long – some big comebacks as well. Mm -hmm. And it just shows how, how we're always in it, you know. We're always in it. Yeah. I, I think top to bottom, you know, you talk about the uh, pitching stuff. I mean, and, of course, uh, with the offense, you know, the, the guys, you know, in the lineup uh, – as you said, it, it, I don't think it mattered, you know, I said where your spot was. I mean, uh, there was a different guy, you know, 
you know, stepping up in the clutch. I mean, you, you talked about Luke Longo. Uh, I think even um, uh, Kevin Putzke, you know, came up with, uh, or it was Kevin Bloom, I, I think came up with a tremendous catch, you know, sitting in yeah. the tournament, you know, to, to end the, the, you know, the game. I, and that that's why I wanted to ask you what made, this, you know, this group, especially uh, this year's group, so special because, I mean, you talk about the roster. Uh, I was just taking a look at it this afternoon. You know, guys from California, from Texas, Massachusetts, Pennsylvania, yeah. from Jersey. I mean, a lot of guys from Jersey. But to see how collectively you guys came together as a group, I mean, I, I think that's just is so remarkable, Jared. Yeah, I think you said it perfectly. Um you, you never know who's going to get the big hit, yeah. but you knew you knew somebody was going to do it. Yeah. So I think I think it shows how close of a team we were. I always say, like, this is one of the closest teams I've ever been on. We have a great group of people. Yeah. And, you, you know, you mentioned where everyone – where a lot of the team uh, – my teammates were from. And, and no matter where they're from, they bought into the program. They bought into NGIT baseball. And, you know, when you play for the guy that's standing next to you and you're not selfish mm -hmm. and – you really just buy in and you, you do everything you can to get a win, do everything you can as a hitter to get on base, as a pitcher to get the guy out. You know, that stuff starts to build up and translate. And the culture that was built in this program, I think it really, it really shows you how we're getting good people into the program. And when they're here, they're doing everything they can. Even the guys who aren't playing, you know, they're cheering on the top yeah. of the step, at top step. They're, they're warming up players. They're, they're mm -hmm. doing everything that they can for the team. And, it's really a team atmosphere, and that that's a separator. You know, when you have a lot of guys who can who can sort of buy in, and, and you know, you root as hard for the next guy as you do yeah. the guy before him. It, it it's something special, and that, that's what this team had this year. No, I agree. And I know it was a strange ending to the tournament. <laughs> I mean, it just I I don't think we we're gonna. I, I don't know if we'll see it ever again. But uh, you guys were able to to celebrate. I mean, the way it you know. It uh, started out on Saturday and then, you know, ended up on uh, on Sunday morning slash afternoon. But uh, I, I had to ask you that moment, uh, you guys, you know, found out that you were, uh, you know, America East, you know, tournament champions. I mean, and, you know, clinched that NCAA, you know, automatic berth. I mean, just what that moment was like. I mean, we saw it on video, but I, I had to ask, yeah. you, you know, for you up close and personal, what that moment, you know, was for you, Jared. I, th I think at first there was sort of like an element of shock. Like, yeah. Like what, what's going on? <laughs> <laughs> and then once, once it was really explained to everyone, what, yeah. why we, you know, why, what happened happened. Yeah. And then I think that sort of set it, set in that we were going to a regional, you know, I know. Th that's yeah. why you play this game, yeah. play college baseball is to go to the regional and play, play yeah. these important games. And, you know, we were all competitors. We all wanted to play. We were there ready to go, yeah. but you know, the weather, the weather didn't cooperate, but once we knew we were going to a regional, like we, we were pumped. We were pumped. Yeah. And uh, the, re the regional is what everyone wants to do. Everyone wants to play. And we accomplished that. And it was the first first regional win of NJIT baseball history. Yeah. And yeah. It, it's it's really awesome that I got to be a part of it. And I think everyone in that moment, we were just pumped that we were going. We were still yeah. playing ball, you know. Talk, talk about selection day. And then, of course, uh, I want to ask you about, uh, you know, leading up to that first game against Arkansas. Yeah. You, you know, you guys flew down to Fayetteville a couple of days beforehand and, you know, getting to – you know, practice on the field and, you know, just, uh, you know, probably walk around and, you know, experience. I mean, I'm sure with the ASUN, you got to experience, you know, uh, traveling to other states. But, uh, you know, just just the lead up to that first game, you know, can you just dive into that, Jared? Of course, yeah. So Selection selection Monday, yeah. um, the show, we were all in like a theater watching the, uh, watching the Selection show. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that we were the worst team of the four seeds. I think yeah. we had a pretty decent RPI. And we didn't really expect our name to go yeah. for Arkansas. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I remember saying to one of my friends, Kevin Blum, I said, I said, uh, there's no way that this is us, right? We can't be playing the number one team in the country. Yeah. And he goes, I don't know, man. And, and then sure enough, <laughs> like right away, first name off the board, NJIT. <laughs> so that then, then you know, another element of shock, like, oh, my yeah. God, I yeah. can't believe this is happening. No. And then there was a little bit of foreshadowing going on during the week. You know, tweet people were starting to tweet from Arkansas. Yeah, They were saying, welcome to Fayetteville. Yeah. We're excited to have you guys. We can't wait to watch you play. And then that's sort of when the monsoon of nice of nice things came. Yeah, you know, yeah. the Arkansas fan base sort of adopted us as as we're saying, and uh, they they just basically 
they, they started really caring about our baseball team and started had nothing but great things to say about us. Like, welcome. We're, we're, we can't wait to see you guys. And, and after we played Arkansas, then everyone started saying like how, how great we were, you know, I just can't say enough great things about the fan base, yeah. you know, the, the Arkansas, the people of Fayetteville, they're, they're just awesome people. And, and they really made us feel at home and, and they really treat us with such respect and class. Yeah. I mean, you think of uh, what you guys were able to do initially in that game. I mean, Albert Choi hits the leadoff home yeah. run and the, the, the dugout goes absolutely bonkers. And then you take that three, nothing lead. I mean, what was that? You know, you're sitting there in the dugout and you're like, here we are, as you said, playing the number one team, overall seed, number one team in the nation, 11,000 fans. You go from no fans <laughs> you know, like I said, during your home games during the season to here in front of 11,000. I mean, you know, but you it didn't phase you guys at all. I mean, you guys were very comfortable in your own – in this setting. I, I had to ask you, what, what was that moment for you like in the dugout with the rest of the guys? Oh, it, it was electric, you know. It was – especially Albert's home run. Yeah. Albert's home run was, was really electric. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're just playing baseball in front of no fans, in yeah. front of 1,100 fans. It's still the game of baseball. And, and once you're out on the field, I think the pregame jitters is a little – it gets a little hairy. But once yeah. you're out on the field, you're playing the game. It's the same game, you know. No matter who you're playing, they, they got to warm up just like we do. They got to they gotta get hits and – and we wanted to make we wanted to make them earn it. That's for yeah. sure. They were going to beat us. We wanted to make them earn it. So we we played our hardest. We played our hardest, and we we wound up getting out to an early lead, and we we were ready to go. You know, we yeah. we've been waiting. We've been working for this opportunity, and we finally we earned it this year. And, and I'm really I'm really happy with the way the guys played. And yeah. it was it was a surreal experience. It really was. I think you know that game was a statement game. Even though you lost it, I, I that was uh, – and I enjoyed, you know, writing about that game because the resiliency of that – of your uh, of the team, you know, not to give up. You, you fall behind, what, 10-3, but you, you end up losing 13-8. But you guys were right in that game, had some opportunities even to, you know, inch up closer and, you know, cut the gap even further. But the fact is, I think really – that game, you know, put NJIT, you know, really, I said, I, I think, uh, I firmly believe on the national map and, you know, said we were talking about even a worldwide, uh, uh, Jared. Yeah, like you said, we, we really were like a couple hits away. Yeah. We, we left a lot of runners on base, which it, it was unfortunate, but, you know, that that's the game of baseball. <clears throat> but I think that, like like we were talking about before, this kind of yeah. goes back to grip ball, you know. Yeah. yeah. We're not going to, we're not just going to roll over because the game was 10 to 3 or whatever the score was, we were going to keep playing until the last out. Yeah. So we, we loaded up the bases a couple of times, got a lot of, got some, got some timely hits, but we just couldn't cash in on that huge one, you know, yeah. but that that's baseball. And we're, we're going to keep playing no matter what. And, and even when I'm gone, I know the guys are going to keep playing. No, no one's ever going to give up. And yeah. no matter what the score was, that, that doesn't dictate the way that you play. You can always hustle no matter what you could always play with grit. You could always, you could always try your hardest and, and that, that's sort of what NJIT baseball is all about. Like, we're never going to go away. And that game, this game is a perfect example of it. Yeah. All right, let's fast forward to Saturday against Northeastern. Uh, a tight, you know, game there. I said, uh, but you guys are able to, to jump out to a lead. And then um, it gets a little dicey, you know, I said in later innings. But uh, you guys are able to hold on for the win. I'm wondering as the innings, you know, progressed, and you get towards, you know, that eighth, ninth inning, you know, especially let's go to the ninth inning, you know. And what, what you know, just to walk me through it, you know, what, what the, you know, the dugout is, you know, experiencing. And, um, yeah. you know, when Jake, you know, said, uh, you know, retires the Sayonara, you know, said uh, spotless inning, especially that final out, uh, just to, just again, describe it, uh, Jake. Well, well, the, uh, we, there was actually the key strikeout that Jake had in the eighth inning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he comes off the mound. He gives us a nice, like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and, you know, our fans started going a little crazy. We had some Arkansas yeah, fans there, yeah. too. So I think that really that really pumped up the dugout, you know. It yeah. was it was a close game. It was a very quick-moving game. Yes. And we had a great start from Ryan Fisher. Mm -hmm. Jake comes in. Whenever we, whenever Jake has the ball, you know, we feel great. Yeah. And he comes off. He sparks up the bench. And then the ninth inning, we were all locked in on every pitch, ready to go. You know, that was a big moment for us because we – 
we wanted to prove, you know, we could hang, we hung with Arkansas, but we wanted to win a game. Yeah. Northeastern was a very good baseball team. Mm -hmm. They had a very successful season. They had some really good ball players, yep. specifically really good pitchers. So we were really, we were really pumped in. We were really locked in the dugout, a little tense, a little tense on every play. Yeah. And, you know, when the ball goes in the air, you hold your breath a little bit every time, but yep. We, we were pumped. We couldn't feel more comfortable with Jake on the mound. So we, we were ecstatic. And once that last out got recorded, I think it was a little sigh of relief for everybody. Yeah. And we were all we were all pumped up. And we had a we went out, had a great dinner, yeah. had a <laughs> great barbecue, Southern barbecue dinner. So. <laughs> no, definitely. Yeah, you know, I think Ryan, you know, said uh, I think a sophomore. I mean, for him to go out there. And you know, spin one of the you know one of the best you know said performances of the season you know there in a very you know said competitive and you know said stressful need you know atmosphere. I mean that you know you talk double elimination. You know it's like you know and the season is on the line and you know for him to to come up you know said huge like that was just again you know was was fabulous. Yeah, he 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 has made tremendous leaps and bounds this year. He's an excellent pitcher. He's one of the people that you say, you know, they have a slow heartbeat. You know, he's, he's not really phased by much. Yeah. And uh, whenever he has the ball, it's you're, you can almost pencil him in for seven quality innings. Yeah. He's such a great pitcher, and he's, he's going to be really, really, really good in the future. And he's going to be a name to watch out for. So yeah. he, he, he's taught me a lot as a, as a pitcher how, how to handle yourself. And he, I'm really, really excited to watch him perform these next couple of years. He's going to become – a great leader on the team and, and guys follow him, you know? Yeah. So when he, he was getting the start game too, no matter what, and the team was always comfortable when he's on the mound, he can't say enough great things about Ryan. Yeah. And he's a big game pitcher, you know, he's had no. so many big starts for us. And without him, we don't get to where we are. You know, I was thinking back to the America East tournament now is that you receive, I mean, the, the pitching staff was unbelievable, especially the starters. I mean, even the relievers, uh, you know, going deep into, you know, so they could save the bullpen, you know, that, that was, I think, you know, key in, uh, you know, exactly. in the tournament as well. Uh, I know Sunday was, a, you know, tough. I mean, you never want, you know, a season to end, you know, on that note. But the fact is, again, you guys kept battling that day. But I, I think, uh, again, you know, you could see from the crowd, you know, the, the respect level. And I, I know it was a very uh, – emotional day like you know especially as some of the starters came out you know yeah. uh with Jake and you know I said with a couple other guys there I think uh me and the Marcano brothers I mean can, can you just talk about um that day ending but like you know the fact is I, I'm sure a lot again a lot to be proud of you know what you were able to do uh in you know the 2021 season Jared yeah, you know, it, it really stinks that we lost that yeah. game. You know, we, we would have liked to beat a really good team in Nebraska. Yeah. But I think I think that um, it was kind of a uh, not not a good way to end it, but it was it was a peaceful way to end the game. You know, yeah. there, it wasn't really stressful towards the end, yeah. and it gave our guys a chance to get, like, a nice standing ovation from the fans, yeah. which I think was <laughs> really great. But uh, it, I think it was really emotional. For me personally um, – you know, I have so many great friends on this team, and yeah. I love playing under Robbie. And it, it's really tough when when there's change and things end. But I, I'm happy that I went out. I came back to go out with the guys in my class, Tyler, yeah. Tyler, and Matt. And uh, we picked up Kevin Blum this year, who has been nothing but tremendous. Yeah. And it, it's sad, you know, it's sad that we don't get to play anymore. But at the end of the day, these these guys are my friends for life. So it was a short, it was a short, um, sad stint, but we quickly turned it around because, you know, we're, we're going to see each other all the time. We're going to always yeah. be around each other. We're always going to be talking. And uh, my, my catcher, my roommate, Paul Franzoni, he's called me 35 times or, or th something, like almost all of my starts. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's emotional that we're not going to be a battery anymore. But, you know, specifically him and everyone else, we're all going to be friends for life. And, and we're, we're tremendously grateful that we got this opportunity to play with each other yeah. and win and win, do something really special. So it's and at the very end, when, once that last hour is recorded, um, there's definitely some tears. But as, as time goes on, um, we all know that we're all going to be around each other quite a bit. And we're really happy that, really happy that we got to experience this. Well, you guys didn't leave Sunday night. You were celebrities, you know, down there. Uh, in the hog pen and uh, people, I, that was just like, you know, to see all the videos that that was really cool. And you and the pictures, you know, exchanging yeah. you know, shirts and, you know, that, that was really nice to see, you know, that yeah. uh, 
again, you know, you talked about the Southern hospitality, you know, said of, you know, down there in Fayetteville, that that was really cool to see, uh, Jared. Yeah, it was really, it was really cool. I mean, they're offering us food, offering us, uh, they want to give us SEC baseballs. You know, it, it, it's really awesome. You, you, you know, I never really knew that that a place like that would would exist and like such a great like a nice place with. Yeah. Well, first of all, the city of Fayetteville is beautiful. Yeah. And then to have such a beautiful stadium with just a, such a dedicated fan base, they just love baseball in Arkansas. You know, they love baseball and they treat us with such great respect. And they they started some NJIT chants and some jersey swaps and <laughs> we got we got a security escort all the way down to the front row. Oh wow, so, that is. That's, yeah. yeah, you just you just can't beat it. Yeah. You can't yeah. beat it. And they showed us on the big screen. They were calling the hogs, doing the chants. Yeah, you know, you really you really just can't beat it. And it's really hard to describe like how awesome it was. Yeah, and it was such a unique unique experience. Like everyone, everyone loved it, and everyone had such tremendous things to say about the people of Arkansas. I've never I've never given so many uh, knuckle touches to people. <laughs> in my life, you know? just, congratulating us telling us yeah. great job great season and i'm happy that they get to have a winning ball club because th those fans deserve it they yeah. deserve to have a good team that they can root for yeah no definitely um how was that ride home you know i said uh, back to jersey i had to ask you about that quickly i have a couple more and i can't yeah you. yeah no it, it was it was interesting we got a charter flight so that was cool okay <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool um it, you know, it's fun. Travel days, travel days are long, but they're fun because yeah. you get to hang out with everybody and and be around each other. It was a little, it was a little bittersweet knowing what was coming to an end, but yeah. you know, the flight was pretty cool and and get just getting to be around everyone and take it all in is yeah. is always just a good time, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. How you know for you personally in the twenty twenty one season? I had to ask you as a pitcher, and you you uh, elaborated on. Uh, you know, working with Paul Franzoni. And that was really great to see Paul, you know, saying last at bat of his, you know, the season, you know, being able to hit a home run, you know, said there, I think in the eighth inning. But uh, talk about your season personally, you know, what, uh, you know, you know how you felt, you know, I said, you know, you did. And just, you know, again, working with, you know, I said, uh, Paul as well. I know that I think Luke also, you know, caught, you know, I said behind the plate as well. But just talk about that. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, going into the season, uh, I didn't really know if I was going to play after my COVID year mm -hmm. just because I wasn't, you know, it wasn't in the plan for me. Yeah. Um, I finished my undergraduate degree. I wound up, ha I had to get, I had an injury last, my senior season to my labrum. Okay. And COVID allowed me to get surgery and get healthy. Mm -hmm. And then they also gave me the, uh, my scholarship and they let me come back. And I found the master's program. Paul, me and Paul, we, we've been friends. We've lived together two years now. I didn't really have a place to live going into the senior season. And he, <laughs> he brought me in. Me and him, we live in a little 120-foot square foot apartment. 120-square-foot yeah. apartment, <laughs> two, two beds, ha half the size of our old dorm room. But I, I really wouldn't want to be with him, anybody else. He's yeah. one of my closest friends. And, you know, the pitcher-catcher relationship, I think in my five years here, I might have shaken off, shaken them off pitches like three times maximum. Yeah. And, you know, two of them were home runs. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I might have shaken them off three times. I, I just have such trust in him. Yeah. And, you know, my numbers this year, they were okay. They weren't yeah. great. But the, the stat that I want to I, – I love the most is my last five starts down the stretch. We, we won all those games. Yeah. So that, that's what I'm really proud of. And I'm proud of the team. You know, I, I think that's that's something that I like to think of whenever whenever I'm on the mound. I I like to think our lineup has confidence that we're going to win the game, and they score they score some extra runs for me. So I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Yeah. So that's what I like to reflect on the most. Yeah. And my counterpart Tyler Staffinger, he uh, we've been in this, we've been doing this forever. He we have almost 500 combined innings and. Paul catches the both of us, and I think that there's no other person, no other two people that I would love to be going through this experience with. And I'm just grateful that they they sort of came into my life, and they've taught me a lot. And they're they're great people, tremendous people, and they're going to do great things in their life. And and it's yeah. it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing, really. You know, I was looking at uh, the stats, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, pinpoint a couple, uh, you know, games. I think that that May 22nd game against UMBC, and then. Um, uh, I don't know it was against Albany on March 21st, seven. Yeah, 
I think those two games, you know, when I, I look really stand out, you know, I said this season. Yeah, they were th those two starts, you know, they're, it's really easy. I don't strike out a lot of guys. Yeah. So when I'm throwing strikes and, you know, I trust I trust our defense you know, more than any, anything in the world. I just let the defense work, you know. Yeah. I hit them hit to our guys. They're, they're going to play catch. Yeah. Before every inning and uh, our third baseman, Jared Donnelly, who's one of my close friends as well. Mm -hmm. I always say you're getting three ground balls this inning. I, I told – I'm going to let him hit it to you, man. <laughs> just catch the ball and throw it. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just thankful that our team plays such great defense because I, yeah. I what as a pitcher, it, it makes your job really easy when they can catch it. Yeah. And that's all, that's all that I trust. I trust them the most. And those two starts specifically was things were really working for the defense and for yeah. me and just weak contact. And then, you know, though I'll, I'll really remember that UMBC start a lot because yeah. that was our senior day. Okay. And my yeah. family was there for the first time all season. So oh, it was it, it was really special. It was really special. Yeah. No, that's great. Uh, when you, you know, think about where you first came, you know, to NJIT, I think, what, back in 2017. I mean, could you ever imagine, you know, from, you know, and maybe you want to talk about that first year and now, and then overcoming again, you know, said uh, the labor injury and, you know, here being able to finish out on this high note. Uh, could, I mean, just... I had to ask you, you know, just what, what those emotions are, you know, going through, you know, Jared. Yeah. yeah. It, it, when I reflect back on my freshman year, yeah. you know, we, we really – we only had nine wins. We, we were ridden with injuries. Yeah. We had so many injuries. And, you know, it kind of put guys in roles that they didn't expect. Yeah. And uh, as a freshman, I wasn't playing a whole lot. But towards the end of the year, I started getting a lot of uh, innings. And I think that those innings and those seniors on that team – and the upperclassmen, mm -hmm. that's what really taught me how to, how to pitch, how to be a baseball player, and how, just really how to model myself. Those guys have been great role models. Yeah. And I sort of knew – I always knew that we had good players through NJIT. Mm -hmm. We were just missing that sort of the right – the perfect storm at the right mm -hmm. time. My second year here, we made the A-Sun tournament. We had a really good, really good season. Mm -hmm. And we, we always had great players. I mean, we had a couple all-conference all players when I was yeah. a sophomore – and it just – we always had good players. And this season, I think that we sort of added – we added some pieces and we it was a good mix, a yeah. good mix of veteran leadership and young talent. Yeah. And I think that was a perfect storm of a team. And and I'm really proud of what this program has become. And I, I speak to, you know, some of the alumni. They're all they're all really close friends. We're all, yeah. we're all in contact all the time. And they're, they're proud. And, and I think that they all know that they had just as much of a part in changing the culture of the program as, as I did and as other yeah. players did. I mean, this team is built for, uh, for next season. You really look at, uh, there are quite a few people coming back. Then you, you take in and start the incoming freshmen coming in. I mean, and again, the, the, the outstanding job uh, of recruiting, you know, said not only here locally within New Jersey, but then state, you know, across the country, uh, it just it's uh, again a, a great mix. Um, I you know I know you talked about head coach Robbie McClellan, but the the job him and the rest of the coaching staff has done here. I mean, in a short amount of time, when you really think yeah. about it, uh, I, I think you know again they deserve you know so much credit. Uh, can you just talk about what are some of the intangibles that you know uh, you know head coach Robbie McClellan brings to the table, uh, Jared? Well, Ro Robbie has been tremendous to me. He's treated me so great over my career here. And he the biggest thing that Robbie um, does for the program is how much he cares. You know, he bleeds NJIT baseball. He's, yeah. he's, as, he's a baseball guy. He loves NJIT baseball, and he's so personable. Yeah. He, he tells you like it is. He tells you what he expects of you. And he, he has faith that you're going to be – you're going to be a good ball player and you're going to perform well. So, you know, when he – when Robbie says something, like, he really means it. He's genuine. He's as genuine as it gets. And he really, really, really loves NJIT baseball. And he really cares. He'll give you the shirt off his back, yeah. you know. He's just a tremendous leader, tremendous role model. And he's a he's really a player's coach is a good way to describe him. Mm -hmm. he, he lets the players play, you know. He, he tells you – he tells you what he expects. And – he keeps it simple, and he, he really places a lot of faith in us, a lot of faith. And he has our back, and we know that, and we have his back. And that, that sort of mutual – that mutual connection is important as a, as a head coach. No, definitely. Uh, just have a couple more. I, you, you can't – I mean, you need a solid uh, athletic department administration. 
Yeah, you had, I mean, you talk about uh, athletic director Lenny Kaplan and the rest of the staff, you know, again, you know, it just uh, just amazing what they've been able to do. Uh, can you just talk about that uh, support system? It's so critical, yeah. Jared. Uh, very critical, very yeah. critical. You know, we have great academic advisors as well. Yeah. You know, things get tough sometimes academically. They're always yeah. there to help. Um, Lenny's been awesome. He, he really supports the team whenever he can. And, you know, we – just even sometimes people who aren't directly involved, like um, I've been very close with Sean Morrison of NJIT Athletics. He's mm-hmm. been awesome to me. He's treated me treated me as, as great as I could have ever imagined. And, and, you know, even after baseball, they're still reaching out to me and, and helping me find, you know, find a job, find the next chapter of my life. And mm-hmm. that's why that's why there's such a strong alumni base here at NJIT, because everyone is so involved. At my, our, our SID, Miles, who runs, yeah. you know, our Twitter, runs our social media. He's been tremendous i mean we've gained so many followers in the past yeah. month or so it's it's really remarkable yeah. getting our name out there and you know i can't say enough about how how great our support system is at ngit and everyone really wants to see us do well and they give us the necessary tools you know maybe we can get a field in the, in the next few I, I was just about to say that we, we need to have that home field i mean can you imagine that you know Having that home field advantage, I don't know where they'll build it, but build it somewhere. You know, build because, it somewhere. Oh my God, it will be off the charts. It will be off the hook. You know, with that, I can only imagine. You know, you'll draw from here, from uh, New Jersey. You know, from Bergen, yeah. Hudson County, uh, elsewhere, and then the city is right across the river. I mean, I, I can I just that would be. Uh, yeah, and we, yeah, we I mean, used to play at uh, Newark Bears, which was yeah, it was yep. that was a tremendous place to play. You know, yeah. it had that Newark flavor, you know, that yes. grit, gritty flavor. Yeah, and uh, the skyline of New York City was in the I back, know. and it, it was really a beautiful field. Yeah, and if we could get something, maybe we could just take pick up Kane and put it put it right in Newark. <laughs> <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? Slap, slap some NJIT logos on there. And, <laughs> and you got a you got a pretty nice field. Yeah, that's right. Um, I had to ask you, you're an applied mathema- mathematics major. I'm wondering uh, uh, how that applies to pitching. <laughs> you yeah, didn't yeah. speak anything out of that, uh, Jared. <laughs> you know, when you, when it makes pitching a lot easier, you know, yeah. you're doing a lot of math problems. Yeah. <laughs> P- pitching is the easy part. You, you know, it, yeah. it, it, makes it, it makes it sort of a nice outlet from school. Yeah. And I think a lot of players on the team can, can say similar things. You know, yeah. we have a lot of engineers, and engineering is not easy. So baseball is that outlet for everyone, you know? It's a, just a true credit and testament to you guys because you talk about NGIT is known for academics. And to see now athletics, see that mesh, that, that comp, perfect combination, you know, is just, I mean, that's super. I mean, that, that's special, you know, to see that. I, I, I had to ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, that, I think that just really speaks to how hardworking our team is. There, there's constantly, you know, there's final exams, there's midterm yeah. exams all throughout the semester. Yeah. And, you know, guys, they just work through it. They yeah. work through it. And and they're diligent in their studies. We have a really high team GPA. And it, it's just how, you know, that's sort of the culture of the team. That's yeah. the culture of the team. And that's that's how it is. There's a lot of, there's a lot of late nights of homework, a lot mm-hmm. of early mornings of classes and things of that nature. But to persevere through that and have a high GPA and yeah. I – and you know, we, I don't really remember guys, anyone not graduating. You know, we everyone really graduates on time. Mm-hmm. They grad, and we've had so many masters, people in their masters. It speaks to the the, the diligent um, nature of all the t- all, all my teammates. And you know, Robbie really creates that environment. He cares about your grades. Mm-hmm. If you have if you have a test coming up or you have something, he's, he'll work with you with with practice times and and that really reflects. You know, our academic advisor Sandra was mine. She was amazing. Um, Sandra Taylor, she was amazing. Mm-hmm. It was, it's really a, a great support that we have. And, and specifically the math, my math department was very flexible. They were working they They were really great. Every, everything was structured well. And if they set you up for success, you know, yeah. it's, it's a great environment. Yeah. It's not easy balancing out both academics and athletics. I mean, again, you talked about the growing schedule, you know, talk about practice time, you know, games, and then, you know, said, uh, hitting the books and, you know, to see across the board, you know, with NJIT athletics, the, again, the GPA, you know, is being so high and then, you know, going on to have successful careers is just, uh, again, uh, terrific. 
I just have a couple more. I, I'm sure you don't want to you want to pay homage, of course, to Barnegat High School. You're down Jersey Shore. It said uh, my folks have a place in LBI, so I'm so happy to be talking to someone from you know Ocean County. So yeah. you, were, you were able to earn a bunch of accolades. You know, said uh, at Barnegat High School, uh, win a championship down there. Um, I think. Uh, you know, said uh, lead Barnegat in batting in 2015, 2016, and most career walks and stolen bases. And that's what I wanted to ask you I, before is that, uh, you know, making that transition. You were uh, at what play, you even played third base at NJIT and then going on to be a pitcher. But, uh, you know, talk about Barnegat High School. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Barnegat <laughs> High School has a great baseball program. They just yeah. won B South again this year. They shout out to those guys. You know. <laughs> Barnegat has loved baseball. Coach Dan McCoy, he runs a great program. Yeah. Me and him talk all the time. He, he was a great mentor to me. And, you know, I pitched quite a bit at Barnegat. Okay. So when I went to NJIT, there were a lot of a lot of injuries to the pitching staff. Yeah. So it was sort of an easy transition. You know, I, I was already yeah. – I've already pitched quite a bit at Barnegat High School. Yeah. Me, Coach McCoy helped me so much in making uh, uh, some good pitches. Like my changeup, he really helped me with my changeup. So – yeah, he's he, he's been a real role model to me, and and you know we actually helped out me and my uh, one of my good friends John Corbett, one of my ex teammates. Mm -hmm. We were coaching the uh, the tournament that they went on this summer during COVID, the Barnia team. Okay. So that was pretty much all of the yeah. high school players, and it was a uh, it was a great experience. And I, I wouldn't trade Barnia High School for the world. I loved every minute of it. Yeah. And we, we have some hardware, some championships to prove it. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, there's a great culture at, at that baseball program. And they're going to do some great things and they're going to keep winning. They're going to keep winning and I'm going to keep going to the games, you know. <laughs> hey, to see all your hard work pay off there, you know, and of course at NGIT, I'm sure uh, those, those are special moments. Um, I had to ask you, you know, growing up, uh, you know, uh, what sports you play. And then, you know, when it comes to the game of baseball, what makes it, you know, so unique and special, you know, for you, Jared? Yeah. I, I don't know. The thing about baseball is that every, every game is so unique, you know, yeah. it's, it's such a, it's such a unique game. And, and it really, of course, it takes a great level of physical ability, but yeah. there's such a mental side to the game that mm -hmm. is so, so key and so crucial. And I think that's what a lot of fans love about baseball is that you have to think through every sort of, every sort of play, every situation. And, you know, you got to find a way to get the job done, you yeah. know. And I, I'm a Yankee fan, you know, so <laughs> there's a lot of thinking and craziness that goes on with being a Yankee fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that I think, is a, is a separator. It's, it's a, it, t it takes an intelligent person to be a good baseball player. And, I, and I, I really, really love thinking about baseball, thinking of different ways to be successful. Yeah. And hopefully I was able to spread a little bit of that onto the younger or my younger teammates, you know, that's, that's what's a separator. Everyone at the division one level or even good high school teams, everyone is a good physical athlete. You know, they're strong, big, but the separator, that's what makes you so good is, is the mental game yeah. and how well you can handle showing up to the field each day, how well you could think through the situation of whatever it may be. You know, that's what makes a good player. That's what makes a good team. So that, that's what I, that's what fell in love with baseball. My father introduced me to the game. He's been such a role model to me, and I can't, I can't even, uh, I can't even describe it. You know, it, yeah. it's, it's a, uh, it's very important to translate a strong, sound mental game to baseball. Yeah, uh, you, you were answering a couple of my final questions because I was going to ask you about support from uh, family, and then uh, of course um, your advice. You know, I said for for younger kids and for uh, even the, uh, you know, the younger people on the team, freshmen and sophomores. You know, the underclassmen, but. Uh, yeah, I just said, if you wanted to, I mean, you talked about your dad, it, you want to talk about your mom, you know, other family members as well, because I'm sure, you know, I said that that really, you know, especially when you were dealing with that yeah. injury and then like, you know, other moments that that really, you needed that, you know, support system from them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Me, me and my dad have been, uh, we've been traveling all over the world. My mom couldn't always make the trip because my sister, you know, she's a little bit younger than me, mm -hmm. but uh my, my dad, me and my dad have been traveling all over the world playing baseball since I was, I don't even know, you know, we went to Cooperstown, we went to Georgia, we did everything that we could yeah. have done. It was really, he's yeah. been just my, my rock. We always talk, always talk about baseball. And, you know, he, he's just been such a role model and inspiration to me. And my mom, you know, she, she's as much of a mother as it gets. Yeah. 
Yeah. She loves me. She always tells me how great I'm doing. <laughs> She's always there for my support, especially especially in college when you're living on your own. You know, you need yeah. that's when you need your mother more than ever yeah. to, to, <laughs> to help you out. <laughs> hey, that's what I was gonna ask you. You know, um, what made the NJIT the perfect fit? I mean, coming you know from southern you know New Jersey, from Ocean County, then up north, you know here. I mean, I, I had to ask you about that. Yeah. So the you know the first thing I was looking for was a good baseball team, of course. But academics was always uh, was always like at the forefront of my uh, my college search, and there were, there were a couple other schools that I was looking at. But I think the 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 right baseball fit in conjunction with the academic side of it, mm -hmm. you know, that was that was like my most important uh, thing. So NJIT, they I mean, like you said earlier, they have a great a great reputation for education, and I wanted to be at a place where that would be. Uh, possible to have a great a great education while also playing really competitive baseball because when I was a freshman there in the, the Atlantic Sun is a very very difficult baseball program yeah. baseball conference yeah so I that that was like the perfect fit for me that's great and it was in state close to close to my family yeah that's true not that far of you know when you think about it you know I said you just hop on the parkway and that that's it you know <laughs> it's an easy drive yeah <laughs> exactly uh you probably answer this, you know, what, you know, and probably the final question, what your advice is, you know, for younger kids, because, you know, there are a lot of pressures, you know, these days, you know, that there I mean, are, media, you know, that there's, you know, again, scholarships. And, I mean, there, there's so much on the table when it comes to, you know, kids, you know, again, and, you know, selecting, you know, said uh, baseball to play. Just wondering what your advice is for those younger kids that aspire to be, you know, Jared, you know, Caxo, you know, one day. Just yeah, wondering. you know, I think I think the best advice that I can give to yeah. to any aspiring baseball player is yeah. just to, to never to never um to never to always play like your game. You know, yeah. there's like you said, there's so much pressure now. There's yeah. so many showcases, yeah, big tournaments, um, you know, college coaches that always watching you. Yeah. But you can never deviate from who you are as an athlete. You can never deviate from who you are as a as a player as a player, as a person. And the best, the best advice that I can give is that if you play hard, you play the game the right way, you know, the colleges will find you that that stuff will find you no matter where you are. You don't have to pay all this money to go play at a tournament or a showcase. If you, if you play the game the right way and you play, play hard, that that stuff's going to find you and good, good things will happen. There's a right fit for everybody. You know, there's always going to be a good, a good spot. Someone's always going to want you. So you have to just stay true to yourself. And, you know, don't try to stay within yourself. That's what, that's what my coaches always told me. Yeah. You know, you, you know who you are as a player. You can't try to do too much. Just stay, stay within yourself and, you know, lean on, lean on your teammates, lean on your parents as a support staff, lean on your coaches. Cause it, you can't do it alone. And if you, if you keep working hard, keep sticking to your craft, think good things will happen. Good things will happen. And when you get to the cop, when you get to college, you have to want to, you have to buy into the program. Yeah. You have to, know where you are you have to try hard and, and earn the respect per se because everyone every, you know you want to you want to be the guy you know everyone wants to be the guy but mm -hmm. if you can look for ways to contribute to the team in any way possible you know people really people really respect that yeah. and as a senior um I really look to our freshmen on NJIT is a perfect example they, they do everything the right way and when they get put in the game, they make the most of their opportunities. They're really – they're a tremendous group of freshmen. I can't say enough great things. And, and they're all going to do really, really well and have really, really long careers. And I'm really – I'm really proud to have been a senior when they – were they when they were here. I mean, you couldn't ask for a better experience. And a better, I mean, <laughs> these guys now have that, you know, in their uh... – in their suitcase now, and they, they can apply that and, of course, pass that knowledge down. I'm sure for you, this year was like a full circle moment for you, you know, being able to do that, to serve in that leadership role, you know, for these, you know, for these freshmen. Oh, absolutely. It was definitely sort of a full circle, like you said. But the, th the thing is that with the freshmen, um, I always try to treat them with respect and make them feel like they're a part of the team. Yeah. You know, it's, it's difficult when you're a freshman. Sometimes you're behind a senior and especially our team, we have a lot of good players. So sometimes you're, you're stuck behind a player, but you, you have to stick to your script. Like I said, you have to keep working hard, keep sticking to your thing, because next year when that player graduates or he moves on, you know, you're going to have to play. And there's no shame in not playing as a freshman every game. 
you know, we, we I think I looked at one of our uh, relief pitchers, Croy Jenkins. Yeah. He, he pitched, he might have pitched around 30 innings, 25 innings. You know, it wasn't the most on the team, but whenever he got put in the game, he really, he really performed well. He wasn't afraid and he was, you have to sort of accept your role as a younger player because, you know, as you grow older, your expectations are going to increase. Yeah. And he was a perfect example when next year he's going to be the guy, you know, he's going to be, he's going to have to double his innings, I would think. So he's going to have those guys and even the guys who pitch less, they're going to all be leaned on heavily because yeah. now they're the guys with experience, yeah. you know. <laughs> so we, they're, they're, I'm expecting high things of them. They're all yeah. very talented players, you know, all the talent in the world. Now the next step for them is just to, you know, to fill in the shoes that they, that, that everyone thinks that they can do. Fill in those shoes, um, and I know that they will. You know, they're they're great. They're they're. Tr- I can't say enough great things. They're tremendous people, and they have a lot of good things coming their way. And and NJIT baseball program for the next few years with those yeah. those freshmen at the helm is is going to be a scary program. They're yeah, going to be man. pretty good. No, I agree one hundred percent with you. So, what does the the future hold for uh, for Jared Keck? So. Well, uh, that remains. <laughs> you make a great coach, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm going to be coaching anytime. I definitely, I definitely want to take a break from baseball. Yeah. You know, I'm going to hopefully leverage my master's degree and get it, yeah. land a good job. That's sort of my next That's step. True. But yeah, everything happens so quickly. I'm going to take a week or two off and yeah. go from there. We'll see. All right, Jared. The floor is yours. I don't want to. Uh, I, I want to leave with you, leave you with the last word because I, I don't want you know. It's been an absolutely you know, uh, true honor and privilege you know interviewing you. You're a class act, so I I want to give you the floor here. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, th- I just can't thank NJIT baseball. You know, Coach Robbie enough and my teammates and and really thank you so much. Uh, without your hard work and coverage for our team, you know, we wouldn't be we wouldn't be getting so much notoriety at this time. So re- I really can't thank you enough for having me on. And, and, you know, I read all the articles and everything that you've written and it's really been awesome to have co- great coverage. And I can't thank you enough for that. Hey, you've represented New Jersey proudly. I said that to, you know, uh, coach McClellan, you know, uh, the rest of the team, you know, that to see, you know, again, we talked about before we came on the air, you know, NJIT baseball, you talked about Rowan and Ryder just to see, the Garden State, you know, I said New Jersey, you know, I said again in a positive light and to see, you know, baseball here uh, on the map, you know, nationally is just, uh, again, phenomenal. I'm just, uh, I, I'm, you know, as we said, you know, the, the next, you know, several years, whatever it is, you know, I mean, New Jersey is going to be a contender here, you know, with uh, college baseball. Absolutely. There's a lot of great baseball players here and it's only going to get better. It's only going to get better. Thank you, Jared. Thank Wish you so you much. Thank you.